simply breathtaking. That is I Pet Goat 2. And um, the gentleman that made it is going to be joining us here via video Skype uh, in just a moment. His production house is Heliofont. And you can go to heliofont.com. Uh, he's worked on many movies uh, like The Spirits Within, Final Fantasy. He, he worked on The Doctor that I think was the best animated in there. In fact, Rob Dew was putting that out before we went on air here. And he is uh, also someone who worked on Gollum uh, for the Lord of the Rings film. Uh, just an amazing artist and spent years uh, putting together what you what you just saw. I mean, I mean, uh, the 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 archetypal images in it. A lot of people have projected onto it their own thoughts, their own ideas, and they say the most powerful art out there uh, you know, is basically designed to do that. Some people have said it's satanic and it's it's programming us. Uh, that reminded me of when I consulted on a scanner darkly for uh, Richard Linkletter and. Winona Ryder, Keanu Reeves, Woody Harrelson, a bunch of others are in it. I'm also in the film. And it's got Illuminati imagery all over it. But it was there to expose the Illuminati. I mean, it's hidden in plain view that, hey, you know, the bad guys are the Illuminati or whatever. And people are saying, oh, my gosh, it's, it's subliminal Illuminati. No, subliminal means it's too quick for the conscious mind to see it. Uh, now, Louis Lefebvre is uh, joining us now. Um, from a uh, city north of Montreal. He's a 3D animator, director, and entrepreneur, and uh, he joins us. Very excited to have him on. Again, you just saw the piece. We're going to analyze it here. Well, Louis, do you need to be burned at the stake? Is this, is this actually satanic programming? No, no, I mean, wh why did you produce this? What is the message that you see in it? Um, well, first, thank you for having me, Alex. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, I think the, you know, there, all symbolism can be invested with whatever meaning you want to project on them. Symbolism is a language. So the elite obviously use it in a kind of degrading way to degrade the human spirit. And they've kind of co-opted all symbolism. It's like, you know, regular humans don't have much knowledge of symbolism and they just, so they don't understand it. They can't really decipher it. And we've been led to believe that all symbolism is us negative and evil, but it's not, you know, it's just whatever we want to put in, into it, whatever meaning we want to put into it. And in my film, you know, the, the thing that people get stuck on the most, I've noticed, is the um, triangle on the Christ figure and also the eye on the Christ figure on his forehead. And uh, for me, the eye placed on the forehead represents inner vision so it's clear spiritual insight for the illuminati or you know the elite when it's used for example on the dollar bill it represents um you know a total control freak sur surveillance society and uh and it's the same thing that's what the the pyramid means it's a it's a every layer manipulating the layer below it and giving the people at the apex incredible control. And the I is about being everywhere and just seeing everything. So it's about total surveillance. Whereas what I tried to put it, I tried to redress those symbols. And so I have it on the, the Christ figure. The triangle means God, it means the Trinity. And it mean, the uh, I means, um, spiritual insight. And then you have the crown of thorns, to me, what that represents, the crown of barbed wires is the way we uh, are manipulated. And it's kind of like a war on consciousness. So you'll notice that the crown is between the triangle and the eye. So it's kind of like a barrier between my spiritual insight and the divine. And at the end, that crown disappears. So it's like, Oh, finally, I have spirit, clear spiritual insight. I can see my creator. Well, that's what I got, and I've never talked to you until now. We set you up for the show, and we talked a few minutes before we went live here, but I've never talked to you about what your, your incredible piece of art means. I mean, it's right up there with Fantasia, the original. But looking right. at it, 
I see it as a person's journey with Christ through life, seeing all the different evil, seeing the different, you know, the sex trade, the torture, the war machines, uh, the devil snake system that looks out of the television, preying on people, programming them, and then, uh, you know, the, the, the individual who's traveling, you know, basically with Christ, symbolizing that flame that you've got the Holy Spirit, that's not really Jesus, that's the individual, you know, with the spiritual connection to Christ, comes out into a wider universe, and all of that was just Plato's cave behind him. And, and of course, there's much deeper symbolism than that, but is that an accurate representation? Absolutely. The, uh, yeah, absolutely. He represents a flame, and so it's a fire. And uh, I don't know if you recall that, you know, John the Baptist had baptized in water and he said of Jesus that Jesus would baptize in fire. So I don't see that it's inappropriate. It doesn't matter. Anything powerful is going to freak people out that go to these globalist program churches uh, who are taught to love world government and they worship six foot icicle preachers. So, of course, they're upset by it because it's moving. It's powerful. What gave you the idea? Because I've never talked to you before, but I feel like I know you just watching this. I mean, you've got Bush in there animated. You even captured kind of his demonic spirit, you know, with the kids acting like he doesn't know what's coming. It cuts to Obama and then he he suddenly looks into the universe, symbolized by you know creation with a flower. Am I right there? Tell us about yourself. Tell us about your your view, your awakening. Um, wow, that's a lot of uh, stuff. But basically, uh, the film came to me in a place of suffering. So it was uh, um, all the things that I had lived personally, and uh, you know the materialism that I had experienced in different realms in my life that I had also contributed to. So not just put on me, but also, you know, I had gotten involved in it as well. So it was about that place of suffering. And it just felt like this film for me was a sort of lifeline, a way for me to, um, to go into my own fears. And I think that I, that's what I've seen in people is it brings up a lot of stuff. It just kind of stops the... Um, the mental uh, programming, and then just kind of goes right viscerally, and people have a, a you know a hard time with it. And I can understand because I went through the same questioning. Uh, you know, I had those fears. I saw this. Uh, I kept seeing the uh, Christ figure on his boat, and I was like, and that was what was coming up for me. I had it felt like I had to do this film, and and I was resisting it because I was terrified in a way because I know what the programming is, I know what the fear is, I know what uh, Christians believe, and I know those fears intimately. So it was, uh, but it was an invitation to go beyond those fears and go deeper into the question and go deeper into my own fears and into my own limitations and transcend those fears. So that's what it was for me. This was a real journey um, say a spiritual journey for me. It was wonderful. Every image, I mean, when I see it there on screen while you're talking, we're playing some clips of it, just conjures up all these archetypes. Uh, and, and, you know, when you, you know, when you're showing Shiva or, you know, you know, other, uh, you know, archetypes, we see the images of women, uh, you know, in, in the walls. It's all right there. But I'm somewhat, from research and study, more conscious than a lot of average people. I can see how someone who's very unconscious, this is almost like a big bucket of ice water being thrown on them to, to, to awaken them. And, and, and so I can see they've been so programmed by the globalists that are aware of what they're doing that when you release something so in your face, uh, that, uh, I mean, just congratulations, you've got people thinking. Yeah, well, I, I you know, uh, like I said, it was, uh, it was, it was a real uh, spiritual journey for me, but I'm glad it's helping people uh, to have a discussion about it. I think it's important. We have so many walls between uh, different ideological systems, and I'm hoping this just kind of breaks down some of the, those walls and uh, I mean I guess that that would be the best outcome um, you know but I can't control what how people interpret it. it's not really my business what they interpret out of it obviously
So I'm just doing what I can. How long did it take you to put this together? Uh, it took me about uh, five years and all. It took uh, four years to, uh, I'd say, full time. So from 2008 to now, I've been working on it full time. But before that, I was working on it part time for maybe three years. So, you know, like cobbled together, it would maybe make another year. So five years in all about. And I've had people helping me since uh, 2008. I've hired, you know, people off and on, on a kind of contractual basis, you know, mostly friends. And uh, some of them, sometimes they'd work freelance from home. Sometimes they'd actually, uh, the last year I've had a guy coming in, a good friend of mine coming in. Uh, three days a week, um, helping me out with the special effects, the the snow, the you know the smoke, the water, all these things. But I did uh, most of the animation. Actually, did all the animation of the characters and did all the modeling as well, and the the rigging and the lighting. But um, all the special effects were done by uh, well, not all, but most of the special effects were done, which is you know. For people who don't know what that means exactly, it's like I said, it's a, it's the snow, it's the water, the fire, the smoke. All these things were done uh, by mostly by freelance artists. And I've had a, a a couple of matte painters, which is the backdrops, the the uh, you know the skies and that kind of thing, um, help me out as well. And I've also hired a, a couple dancers. I had a one girl because I went into a motion capture studio for some of the animation, like half of the animation is is uh, motion capture, like we've seen, I'm sure a lot of the viewers have seen on Gollum. So a lot of the motion capture was done, uh, uh, sorry, a lot of the animation was done through motion capture and the motion capture was done at a studio, a dance studio, um, actually a dance faculty at a university here in Montreal. And I hired uh, two tap, uh, two, uh, one tap dancer and one kind of modern break dance um, dancer to do the little American Indian dancer. So that's that's about the process. Yeah. Louis Lefebvre is our guest. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen in modern times um, such a labor of love with with you know th this many graphics this much energy and time put into something uh, because obviously the time to render the time to draw it the time to put it together for those that don't know i mean even for a big company this would be a major major undertaking so i can uh, uh, i mean i think you're saying you were already awake but you really awoken you know to what was happening in the world and that this is you know kind of your uh, masterwork or something that you know, symbolizes the beginning of what will become your masterwork. Who knows? I don't know where it's going to go, but um, yeah, basically, I, I, I was. Um, I think I felt a lot of. Um, I, I think because it was the Jesus, or well, it's not the Jesus, like Christ consciousness, as I see it. But I mean, if you want to see it as Jesus, that's wonderful as well i mean i think that's like you said it's open to interpretation but because it was uh that character i felt uh, obviously a lot of um i put a lot of pressure on myself because I, I felt like i didn't want to do it disrespect i have a tremendous amount of respect for for the teaching of jesus christ so i i felt i just have to do it you know some justice i can't just uh, be disrespectful with it, but you know, unfortunately, for some people, it still has failed, and and it's um. Oh, I it's, wouldn't let that distract you. I mean, you're exposing evil here. You're getting people to think, waking them up out of their trance. I love how you have Osama bin Laden in the CIA uh, a commando outfit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, from what I've gotten uh, from these views, you're obviously questioning the official narrative of 9/11. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I started this piece, it wasn't really, I didn't know much about that. Like, like I said, it started about 2005. It was starting to, to come together in my head. And uh, at that time, I wasn't into, I didn't know anything about 9-11, like as far as a conspiracy. I just knew it as a, uh, as a time of sadness, uh, obviously, and a marking point in our, in our timeline. Uh, obviously, what I see it as now it's 
obvious to me now, just looking at it like it's the way it falls. Plus, I have an, uh, an engineering background. I, I studied in engineering, so but it doesn't make me an expert. But still, when I look at those two uh, buildings falling today, it's just like, oh, my God, how did I ever think it was not a controlled demolition? And um, but what I see it now as, you know, with my research in symbolism, which I didn't know much about when I started the film, I can now see that it's a ritual as it's a ritual about um, it's kind of a way to say, look, this is what's going to happen to your economy because those two towers are a symbol of the economy. And when they crumbled, it was like, we will implode your economy. And you watch as you watch your economy crumble. So that's what it means. Exactly. As I've studied the the, uh, the Illuminati, who really are the opposite of what they say, they seek to create darkness, but then call themselves illuminated because they're going to be illuminated, but you're going to be in darkness. That right. well, well, it's basic magic. They right. are, they have to engage in the lesser magic of telling you what they're going to do up front. And so the mojo is a trillion times more powerful when they actually do it. So they have to almost count coup before they do it. That's why on Fox TV, they had the government hijack a jet by remote control to fly in the World Trade Center. They make NORAD stand down because of a drill. They say hijackers are on board, but it's really remote control because they want to attack Afghanistan and take American liberties. That aired six months before. And then it turned out hundreds of publications and outfits did the same thing, and they were all literally beating the drum, getting everyone ready to then do this. And then Warren Buffett had over 100 top CEOs flown that morning to already meet with him in a hangar uh, at Moffett uh, or Offutt Air Force Base. I mean, all of this, and then the CIA drills, and then the heads of Al-Qaeda meeting at the Pentagon secretly, and the bin Ladens being flown out. It's important to them at multi-layers to let those of us that are conscious and awake but not serving them, because there's people that are conscious but they serve the dark side, they're only partially conscious or they know what a, what a fool's errand that is because they love death and destruction, but they need to reveal it before they do it. And, and, and again, even if you don't believe in that stuff, viewers, this is what they believe. Uh, comments on that. Again, we're talking to the creator uh, of I Pet Goat 2. You can watch it at uh, heliofont.com, H E L I O F A N T.com. Uh, just amazing. Go there and uh, certainly support the work he's doing, support independent media and research and you know, things like this, because this is a major studio undertaking. You've done it with just a, yourself and a handful of others. But anyways, I'm ranting. Uh, what do you make of what I just said about? this this revelation of the method uh this yeah, yeah. i don't know about that like uh, i'm learning this um as i go along you know i don't know what their intention is but it's gotten pretty blatant and um so i think this film is about taking that symbolism that they have and throwing it back in their face like i mean this is just getting ridiculous and uh like i said i i started the process where i didn't know much about it and I'm learning as I go along. What's wonderful is I've read so many articles and stuff on, you know, conspiracy websites and other websites and people that know symbolism, people that know a lot more symbolism than I do. And uh, telling me about symbolism that I didn't even know about in my film, which is kind of, you know, interesting. And so I just, you know, I'm learning as I go along. But um, certainly, you know, I think you know more about a lot of it than I do. I mean, I, I learned what I learned about conspiracy, actually, I, you know, a lot of it I learned through the web, through people like you. Um, at one point during when I was to, had started making the film, I, you know, I, I, I think I told one of your crew members, sometimes I actually tune in just to, to um, you know, I get kind of down sometimes because I was all along my corner and I, I felt like, oh my God, what am I doing? This is crazy. I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> and uh, and I just kind of tune in and just have, a, you know, it just kind of boost me up to like, okay, yeah, this is important. So. Sure, because the system's all about isolating us, uh, like that scene with the character who's laying there and doesn't even have their own mind and is almost in a waking dream or hallucinating, and then there's the snake plugged into their brain, almost sucking their brain or, 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 or feeding off the fact that right. they're unconscious, and then being able to tune in and hear all the other callers and guests lets you know that there's a giant growing community of people who are discovering deeper layers of reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.
Um, yeah, absolutely. It's like uh, it's an organic process, and it's it's wonderful just to to just kind of go online and and read all these comments and see how it has stimulated debate. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people have gotten the mess, the, the 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 meaning of what I was trying to say, and that's been uh, very encouraging. And I think uh, when did you release this? Um, oh, it was like the the 23rd, I mean, June, the end of June, 23rd or 24th, I think we finished and we had a kind of a, a little rap party with friends and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, well, that shows how things grow organically, sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes in between. I didn't hear about this for a couple of weeks after that until last week. And then right. since then, I'm just looking around doing research separately and seeing it pop up everywhere, positive, negative, everything in between, causing right. causing debate. Uh, and so it seems to just be really picking up steam. That's got to be a satisfying, very, very satisfying feeling. Have you had any, quote, mainstream or dinosaur media uh, contact you about it yet? Uh, well, I've had, you know, like mostly it's been uh, 3D magazines and uh, 3D um, sites that have wanted interviews. And I've just submitted a, a, an article to um, a, a place in Colombia, for of all places, uh, for a journal that's in, actually given freely in the in the metro stations. So um, it's the same company, the same company actually that we have in Montreal that distributes um, uh, these free, you know, magazines with uh, news and stuff like that. And uh, so I submitted an article to them, and I, I need to do one also for uh, a, a guy in Britain that does a lot of more mainstream mainstream journalism. Uh, I don't know if he'll like my answers, though, because he seems to think I did this only for um, publicity, like the, that the conspiracy aspect is only a gimmick to try to generate talk, and that it wasn't actually um, meant... I didn't actually mean what I was saying. Well, yeah, but. I mean, notice how they do something to promote the new Batman movie. It's clearly exploitive. It's clearly hype, but that's okay. But then when we bring up something political that right. obviously is being driven by what we believe, but yeah, we put it out so it has an effect so that we actually are able to reach out to people, that somehow is dirty. And that's the system trying to gatekeep the innate power of humans to communicate through art. Yeah, well, like you said, it's uh, it's it seems to be uh, the media is on a downward spiral. People are tuning out. They can see the conditioning that's kind of reflected in the the character that you were mentioning before, the the uh, serpent with the television head. That's the media, the mesmerizing, and the um, I think I read a book by Michael Tassarian about the. I think it, he called them, the, the word media actually came from Medes, which was a place in Persia, as I recall. And, um, and the Medes were actually, there were a lot of sorcerers that were consulted by the kings and queens and other uh, powers. Yeah, that's where we get the term medium, calling a yeah. medium to talk to the spirit world, yeah. That's right, So it's this, which indicates a, source, uh, a kind of source, source celery. A um, kind of a magician's trick, and 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 certainly that's kind of what the media is. It's always brain trying to brainwash us, trying to keep us in a certain uh, narrative. You know, don't step out of line. Uh, you're a kook. You're a conspiracy theorist. Uh, don't say what you believe. You know, people will think um, you're crazy or you're you know whatever. It's it, it's so that that's represented in, in that character there. And obviously, the, the head of the, his name is Draco, the, uh, that character, the snake character. And the head in the television, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but he's got all the, the uh, symbols of money on his face and on his beard. It's all like dollar bills and stuff like that. And his eyebrows are actually taken from the dollar bill. And so he kind of represents the monetary system or the banking system acting through the media. And the snake part of him is actually can mean many things i've read that the snake can represent technology can represent uh obviously medicine and uh so he's acting through all these things to keep the little uh ludovic character that i called him uh i called him 
uh, Ludovic. And so he's acting through all these things to keep this little character in a sedated state. Um, Going you know, back to the Christ figure, I mean, it's almost like coming out of the womb or a rebirth or, right. or, or a death and a rebirth coming right. out of that darkness. And right. it's on the, you know, boatman, I guess, Choron, or, 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 or not even Greek, going back to the Egyptian. Right. But, but there is no boatman. It's just the boat itself is taking right. him across the river. But instead of death, it's, it's rebirth. Right. It's a form of resurrection, right? The, uh, the, uh, the motif of uh, resurrection was really important in, you know, Greek. Well, mythology. wasn't Christ in the Bible sent to hell to get the keys to death and slavery? It's almost like Christ is yeah, going through. That. Yeah. That's right. So, I mean, yeah. And in Egyptian symbology, we have the, uh, the sun god Ra in his boat, uh, Anipa, or, you know, or, and he travels the sky in his celestial boat, and he illuminates the sky, and in the evening, he goes into the underworld, and he's there during the, uh, during the night, and uh, in the morning, he rises again, and so it's a form of resurrection, and the Anubis uh, boat, which is, a, actually, Anubis is a, a, a Greek uh, god, but based off of an earlier um, Egyptian god called Anipa, and uh, this is a, uh, a, a, a deity that is uh, guarding the gates of the underworld, and he weighs the souls of men and their hearts to um, and protects the, soul, uh, the souls of men as they travel through the underworld. And so I think it's a fitting image. But as I told you, I put the Christ figure in the center of the narrative, I think, to redress some of those. Sure, ideas. sure. And expanding on that, I mean, the point is it just gets people thinking because this, you know, gets off into like, you know, the, the wider world and all these archetypes. But I noticed that when the Christ figure comes out, too, we see a big pyramid in the distance collapse. Right. Well, let's see. The, 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 the main theme of the movie is basically the crumbling of the hierarchical world and the awakening of the hearts of men, you know, standing alone in their relationship to God without having any sort of intermediaries. And so the hearts of men awaken and uh, the, the world serving those hearts instead of trying to dominate them, instead of trying to control and oppress. And so the crumbling pyramid at the end is a um, just, just the, the crumbling of the hierarchical structure and this oppressive type of hierarchical structure. Obviously, there's always going to be some sort of hierarchy in organizations, but it won't be this manipulation, domination type of hierarchy. And you'll notice that the character is in, the, in a boat, uh, the Christ character, and he just kind of goes, sails through the scene, and he's witnessing. And he's actually not creating this. He's not... Uh, destroying the pyramids. It's the sun that destroys the pyramids. The sun in the movie is representative of the divine, the source, the God, you know. Um, um, I, it doesn't mean I'm a sun worshiper. I'm not trying to promote sun worshiping. I've never thought. Of, no, I understand. You know, it's all archetypal. But I mean, I mean, I think the most powerful imagery is the CIA dealing drugs, you know, the big black army tanks, the drones, uh, the programming, Bush dancing around. What, what did you mean by, uh, I mean, I guessed at it, but what is Obama doing in the scene when he looks at the flower? Um, I think it embodies a lot of things, but to me, it's like, this, uh, this, the little girl is holding this apple and it represents all these kind of inward divisions that are cultivated in us to always, uh, to keep us in our place so that we are always feeling shame or inadequacies or guilt. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a symbol of sin, obviously. So we're always feeling this guilt and, and so we're stuck. And we're, we're stuck in a, like the little children behind her, 
who are held down by barbed wire and they're apathetic. So it's a that's what the apple represents to me. And then she just kind of drops it because she realizes, you know, I'm sick of this. And, and, and she's watching the spectacle in front of her. So she's just tired. She just drops the apple and it just kind of rolls down, uh, you know, at the feet of once it came and it just kind of splits open. And to me, that's a symbol of um, kind of duality, of being caught up in the left, right, in the, um, uh, you know, Christian, Muslim, male, female, always fighting, always. Clash of civilizations, a controlled uh, right. clash, of chaos. And spinning in our minds, in our, in our minds, that, you know, that's, that's the duality. And then, the, you know, the, the checkerboard is also representing duality, the black, black and white. And then there's also a symbol of a zero and a one. And that's, you know, that's the binary system, so duality. And then the flower comes out, and the flower joins the two halves, and it comes out. And that's a symbol to me of unifying those two polar opposites and seeing it from a, another perspective, from above. So it's kind of like an awakening to that split mind. Sure, well, men and women aren't, you know, individually the species. It is the two together. And then that's what creation comes out of. I mean, that's all just, again, yeah. The harmony of, you know, everyone seeing themselves in the other and, and, and you know, finding that common space um, from that, you know, and, and not being stuck in the divide uh, so much. And, and that's kind of the, the, the awakening of, the, of, uh, of people, of people realizing they have common interests and it, and and the character of obama is just struck with fear at that point you know you're right because the people are coming together and waking up <clears throat> and and the way you caught bush's mannerisms and the way you got obama's fake you know friendly uh mannerisms you really have done an incredible job uh i want to thank you for the work you've done um uh, you know, in trying to wake people up to 9-11 being an inside job, I mean, right there is important. Uh, tell us about where uh, Heliofont goes from here, heliofont.com, and uh, any other points you'd like to uh, make here, Louis? Uh, well, I don't know where the, the journey is going to take me. Obviously, it was, a, um, it was a lot of time and very draining, very, you know, financially and physically, but very happy with the resolve, very happy I've done it. Um, so I don't know where it's going to go from here. Uh, it's not an incredible revenue generating model, <laughs> to be honest, but uh, we'll see where we go from here. I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback, a lot of opportunities to maybe work on, on you know, more commercial stuff. I don't know if if I'll do that or if I'll, you know. Just but like you said, you'd already done that in some of the biggest movies out there. This was a long yeah. labor of love. I mean, I guess almost almost in a pious way or a cogitative way, you committed for four years to this, put everything you had into it. It's almost a rebellion against uh, commercialism and materialism. I mean, because that's what you were kind of alluding to earlier. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a, a bit of a, um, I wouldn't say pious, but... Uh, it was a monastic. Uh, now, that's what I should say. I mean, I, that was the word I was actually looking for. It's funny you'd yeah. say that, almost like priestly. Yeah, off in the. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I that's think a the lot word of, cogitative, like a cogitor up in a yeah. Right, but I think a lot of people that have are work in 3D have that temperament. You know, they're always at the computer and all that. So, uh, you know, but um, so yeah, I don't. I, I'm not sure uh, what, where it will go from here. I, I, I can't remember the, the last part of your question. Well, that's because I always have these long winded ones. No, just like any other points you'd like to make. I mean, after we're done doing this interview, oh, right. I mean, if you think, oh, I wish I would have said this or. Not really. No, I, I really enjoyed the interview and uh, I'm, I'm happy to just get my point out as well, which is, you know, the first time where I've explained some of the symbolism. I'm going to probably uh update today maybe tomorrow or or friday i'm not sure i'm going to start explaining some of it from my view it's not necessarily because i don't want it to be too fixed you know everyone can kind of put what they want onto the work but a lot of people have been asking me the same questions and um so i'm going to explain some of the stuff i've i've mentioned with you i'm going to put on the website and you know just start a, a discussion that way and see where it goes from there so I have a, a few final questions popping in my head. I mean, we got sex slavery with the old lady in the cage. Is that what that is? 
Yeah, well, that for me, yeah, that can be a lot of things, but it's not necessarily slavery, you know, it's suffering around the sexual issues. So uh, it can be, you know, like uh, in the beginning, she's looking down. So it can be a sort of, you know, overindulgence in sex, or maybe it's also an like an obsession with sex, or maybe it's also an obsession with repressing sex, you know, kind of that old nun that's, you know, you can't have sex, you can't, you know. Or vanity almost, like people get obsessed with how they look. Right, as well, because that, that, I think it, for some people, they've told me it brings up the fear of, you know, getting old and, you know, not pleasing anymore, not being able to have sex. And, and so she's getting old. So I think it brings up a lot of stuff for people that way. And but basically she goes through the piece where she's kind of looking down and and uh, and then she gets, you know, she's in a kind of a shameful place because it's dingy and dark. And you'll notice that on her skirt, she has these um uh, vine leaves, so it's almost like that shame of the Garden of Eden, and she's in her prison, so it's a, it's kind of a, like a, a place of suffering, you know. And at the end, she just kind of, you know, the, it gets inundated with, with light, so it just, you know, just gets purified by light, by connection with with spirit. And at the end, she kind of looks up, and it's almost like she had sex with God, really, you know, like she she and she looks up and she's kind of purified in a way. And, and, well, it's funny and, you say that because, I mean, growing up, obviously women are beautiful, passionate, you like super desire for them. As I get more into the universe and liberty and freedom and all the incredible things around me, quite frankly, sex does not have the power it had over me. But I guess that's because I'm older now. I mean, it's almost like something that I've been there, done that. And it's still interesting. I mean, I'm a you know, great wife, three children, but it's just not... You know, it's not uh, as exciting as, you know, f my French bulldog sitting in my lap or going fishing or hiking up a mountain or kissing yeah. my wife. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean it's almost like, uh, yeah. yeah, people that are completely obsessed with it, it's almost like they're stunted by it. Right. Yeah, well, the point is, you know, if you're, you know, I, th I think the point is, is if, if you're, you're in a place of suffering and you're, you know, it's, if it's an escape or, or something like that, and you're in a place of suffering, you're not allowed to have it because of your religious ideas and stuff like that. There can be a lot of suffering around sex. I thought it was important to put it in the piece. Well, I didn't even think about it. It just kind of visually came well, to Well, sure, me like even like in the porn industry, I read about how unhappy those people are. I was talking to a filmmaker who was doing a documentary on it. He said that a lot of people are just totally unhappy. Well, I guess a lot of people can be, I guess, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there are some exceptions, like there are exceptions in everything. And oh, yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, there are some people, I guess, that, I mean, uh, just, uh, again, it, it brings up a wide spectrum, almost like a cornucopia, the whole light spectrum of ideas. Just amazing. Hmm. Well, yeah, I guess that's the, hopefully the point that it's doesn't feel too dogmatic, you know, because that's kind of what the church crumbling at the end uh, is pointing to, you know, maybe some of the dogma needs to fall away and we just kind of reconnect with our, our heart, our direct heart connection with, uh, with the with the Well, source. I mean, look, all these so-called Christians say the church is God and give it all this money and stuff, but Christ was there criticizing the Pharisees, overturning mm -hmm. the, the money changers' money tables. Changers. Absolutely. So some... Um, it's good sometimes to, to re-question all this stuff, for sure. All right, well, we're going to continue to watch the website. Uh, I know as soon as we end this interview, I'm going to have like 10 more questions. Here's my last one. The black okay. tanks are driving up, and the, and, and the character is waving the white flag. What happens right. there? Well, obviously, it's, uh, well, for me, obviously a, a sign of uh, kind of a re reference to the Tiananmen Square. Uh, so she just kind of represents the Asian sphere, I guess, because she's got that a tiger on her back, so it's the Asian tiger, and it's just that, uh, I guess, it, I guess it could re represent a lot of things. I thought about maybe it represents uh, China, you know, like that repressive regime, or, you know, she's also got like some nuclear, um, anti-nuclear symbol on her cheek, so it could have to do, you know, a bit to do with Japan and how that's being repressed, all that terrible radiation seeping out and they're not allowed to talk about it you know? and then who is that that comes over to her that skeleton character what who is he uh someone told me that's the character of uh like voodoo but personally that's not what i had in mind it was just death you know like she 
she's valiantly trying to to combat the system and um and yet death has, you know creeps up on her and she she has to submit you know in the end uh sure you I, better I, get your work done right now while you're here and alive and, and, and i mean i'm just asking you i mean obviously that's what i got was tiananmen square right yeah i think that's a pretty obvious and, and a lot of people you know I've, I've seen a lot of comments of people online say you know it's kind of heavy-handed or 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 um or but you know uh, yeah yeah they're right it's it is heavy-handed in, in a lot of ways but then again, you know, I look at reality and the way politicians and the media and everything, it, it's starting to get pretty heavy handed as well. No, it's so. gotten extreme and it's telling us don't get extreme so that yeah. we don't have power. Louis Lefebvre, amazing job. And I can't wait to see what you make next. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thanks very much, Alex. It Thank you. It, is that the best website to visit, uh, heliofont.com? Yeah, you can go right to uh, heliofan.com and then we're having some issues. There's been so many people on the, the, the site. It's, it's kind of waning right now, but a lot of people on the site and we're having a bit of difficulty meeting up with demand, but we're, we're trying to figure that out and trying to get that redressed. So uh, hopefully we'll have something better uh, soon, but they can go to that site and then they'll, they'll see the video, uh, the Vimeo feed immediately when they come in and they can click on Vimeo if they want it in bigger and they'll be redirected to Vimeo's site and they can see it bigger if they want, you know, better, better quality and all that. So. All right, Louis Lefebvre, amazing artist and people can claim you're the devil if they want, but there's no doubt that you're an amazing artist. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Alex. Wow. Well, very, very powerful, ladies and gentlemen, and it gets you thinking. The really devilish propaganda out there does the opposite. It just sneaks up. Oh, a football game. Oh, a commercial. Oh, but, but then buried in it are the archetypes and the programming and the messages. That's what's, that's what's seriously uh, corrupt out there. So uh, certainly thought-provoking. And uh, hey, if you think you can do better, uh, dedicate yourself to something like that and let's see what you can come up with because uh, Mr. Lefebvre is definitely in the arena. Well, that's it for this extended edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Until tomorrow night uh, or tomorrow when I'm on the radio, uh, we will uh, see you then, hopefully. Please spread the word about InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv because the system is definitely starting to pay even bigger attention to us. Uh, and we are under attack, and we wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for all of you. And think of all the artists, all the researchers, all the ideas from a wide spectrum. Doesn't mean we agree with it all that we bring to you here. This is all about the labor of love. It's all about the passion. It's all about really trying to discover the secrets of the universe and reality. That's what we're doing here. Doesn't mean we have all the answers, far from it. But we're questing after those answers, and we know we're not going to get it out of the mainstream systems nine times out of ten. Great job of the crew as usual. I'm Alex Jones signing off.